joining me right now for reaction to all of this breaking just now, former Cheney National Security Advisor John Hanna. John, good to have you back on the show. What's your reaction? Hi, well, I think it's part of, you know, this is how Iran rolls, and they've been rolling the last several months. They mm -hmm. are uh, suffering from these crushing U.S. sanctions. Their economy is really on its knees, and they, it, things are only going to get worse for them. And I think they're lashing out in every way they can to try and intimidate either the United States or the Europeans to do something to, to back off of these these sanctions. Mm -hmm. Walk me through what being able to fire a, a ballistic missile for 600 miles could mean for the region. Oh, this is a significant capability. This is the, the largest ballistic missile capability in the entire Middle East that has all of Israel in its range, has all of the uh, Persian Gulf's critical energy infrastructure in its range that, that the entire global economy depends on. This is a very, very serious threat. Luckily, mm -hmm. the United States has got lots of particularly anti-missile defense capability in this region. We've been moving more there. Mm -hmm. And I think the next time the Iranians send up one of these tests, uh, the U U.S. ought to seriously consider about taking it down. You know, they want a conflict, sir. I mean, that is the impression I'm left with after having spoken to sources in Tehran and, and uh, this side of things as well. It, it seems as though they want to engage, they want the president to engage in some kind of conflict because they're convinced that that will hurt him in 2020. And they do not want President Trump to win in 2020 because they'd like a Democrat who will put that deal back in place. Uh, is this... Uh, is this going to be met with any kind of force from the administration, or are they going to have to do something, unfortunately, much worse? Well, I think clearly the United States has got uh, obvious red lines. If uh, Both Secretary mm -hmm. Pompeo, the president, have said if an American is harmed or, or killed by the Iranians, uh, then all bets are off about, about a U.S. military response. But I think the administration's strategy right now— And then the right world's now, with us, by the way. Then yes, it's all presumably. over. It's game over for them because the world's already on our side on this one. They're the ones holding the Brits, 23 uh, people from that, that British oil tanker. Uh, the world saw that we had a drone that was not in their airspace that they shot down. We could have retaliated. We didn't. So we've been remarkably restrained. I think that's exactly right. The president has bought himself a lot of political capital here. It's very important, uh, Trish, in this context, that that international naval force that the United States is going to lead, that the Brits have said they're prepared to step up and put more ships into the Gulf, that our other partners join that mm -hmm. as well, and that the Iranians get the clear message that when they escalate, they get no relief from sanctions. What they get is a larger Western military presence right on their doorstep that I'd can like do enormous damage to them. I'd like to see the Europeans as well sanction the heck out of them. I mean, there's plenty Absolutely. other places to get your oil, including right here from the USA. Hey, John, quickly before I let you go, uh, Iran's not the only one firing off these missiles testing away. You got North Korea doing the same thing. What's your reaction to that one? Well, first, I'd say it's very interesting that both of these missile launches happened within a day of each other. Mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I don't know whether they're connected, but there is a lot of cooperation between Iran and North Korea, particularly on the missile front. With regard to North Korea, I'd say, uh, listen, this just underscores, this is a new advanced short-range missile system, nuclear capable. Uh, it demonstrates that even while they've had a freeze on long-range missiles and nukes, they continue to build out their capability. The threat to our allies, South Korea and Japan, continues to increase. We need to get back to the table the way that Kim Jong-un promised the president a month ago, or they're not going to get any sanctions relief, just like the Iranians. Yeah, sanctions work. I mean, they make everybody really angry to the point where they got to do all these missile fires and tests, et cetera. But it shows you they work. John Hanna, Absolutely. it's good to see you. Thank you.